I, I don't think I would be lying if I said in the last 20 years I've caught 10,000 brook trout here. There he is, right there. There he is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Royal Coachman Streamer. Oh, there These little corner little riffles like that, if they're feeding, that water's only a few inches deep and they're looking for groceries. Okay. Well, let's see what happens. Ah. I've been fishing trout, I'm 71 years old, and I've probably been fishing them for 61 of the 71. Maybe even more, but I was born very young and don't remember at all. But I've spent pretty much my whole life, 99% of my fishing has been trout fishing, yes. There's one. Since I retired seven years ago, I try to get out at least once a week, you know. And uh, the grandkids came along and they put a, you know, I had to struggle for my once a week, but uh, now it's pretty easy and the wife, God love her, you know, after 40 years, she knows, you know, that once a week, it's grandpa's day on the creek. <laughs> there you go. Ah, come on, there we go. Nice fish. Go away. There we go. Oh, missed them. The sure way to get a hit is take your eye off the fly. Never fails. But I do know I've been throwing a fly for 60 years. And we fished here by Bond Falls. That was the only thing used to be at Bond Falls was the ice cream shop. And we used to pitch a tent right there by where one of the dry hydrants was with my mom and my dad and my brother and I. And we'd fish here and that was a big thrill to go, we're going to Bond Falls. You know, we didn't live that far away, but that was always a big treat to go to Bond Falls. And so as I got older, we just, I just kept coming, you know. <laughs> oh boy. Come on, buddy. You're okay, you're okay, yeah. Ooh, there's a good one. That's a good one. Oh, he's gone. That was a good one. The big ones always get away. That was a nice fish. There we go. Under my tree again, Kristen. Brook trout. Probably a three-year-old fish. In our area here, the brook trout will average lifespan three, four, maybe five years. Uh, and it takes about three years for them to get to be eight inches long, which is the legal size in some waters 
in this particular water here, the middle branch of the Ontonagon, it's a 10 inch brook trout size limit. And having worked with fish management for over 30 years, um, I would think I can safely say that in this particular body of water, probably 90% of the fish are under the 10 inch size limit. But it's still an action crick and uh, I have caught a lot of nice trout out of this crick over the last 50 or 60 years. So I keep coming back. There we go. Little fat guy. How pretty though. Spawning colors. Just look oh, at that. Wow. They'll spawn in October, November once the water temperature gets below about 50 degrees. And the male and the females, they'll kind of, the, the female will make a nest, it's called a red. She'll just kind of brush it apart and stuff like that. And she'll drop her eggs in that and cover up. And while it's going on, the male will protect. And once the eggs are laid, then they do their thing. The females, um, some females will lay eggs the first year when they're a year old. Rule of thumb is second season. Uh, and the boys, about the same. Uh, the first year, the female may drop 100 eggs, 150, something like that. The third or fourth year, they might be up to three to 500 eggs or something like that. And if you, if you think about it, let's say this female drops over the course of her life seven or 800 eggs. Just pick, pick a number like that. Only one of those eggs has to make it to adulthood to replace her. The eggs will incubate for about 100 days. Uh, and then they'll start hatching in the fry. They'll find some little cover and stuff like that. They eat off the egg yolk a little bit. And then they kind of start dispersing. And in the first year, they're eh, a couple inches long. You catch a brook trout three inches long now, you know darn well it hatched this spring. That was a, this was an egg last fall. Second year, about six. The third year, about eight. If you get one out of the creek here, 10 inches long, he's probably six, maybe seven years old. Now I have caught brook trout out of this creek here, not many, I can count them on one hand, 14, 15 inches long. Now that fish there, that is obviously the anomaly, but that animal might be 10 years old. What I'm gonna do now, it's called a dropper system. And I have pre-tied this. What this is here, this is a dry fly. This fly will float. This fly sinks. So what I'm gonna do is tie this on here. And this is an upstream type of fishing because if the fish are going after dry flies or floating bugs, they'll hit this, and yet if they're nymphing, they'll go after this. So it's kind of interesting to see what they hit, which one they hit. A little dry fly dope on the fly so it floats. Just a dab will do ya. And rub that on the fly, and that'll keep that fly floating for a, for a while. And you can see, see how the front one is floating? I can get the back one good and wet here. Yeah. So, there we go. Now, what, what did it hit? It's just a little fish, but it hit the dry fly. It's a very little, that's last fall's egg. The only bat drawback to fishing with this system is that it can create a mess after you catch the fish. If they hit the front fly, see what can happen. That's why I don't do this too often. If they hit the back fly, that doesn't happen too often. But if it hits the front fly, you can create a mess. There's a rise right there. We'll see what happens. Oh, I don't know what it hit. There's something about being alone on the creek by yourself, that you're just, you're all by yourself. You and that little fly, 
and that trout. And he's got a zillion things to eat, and you get him to try to eat your fly. You know, it's always, it's always, it's always fascinating. That's a keeper. One for the grandkids. Dry fly. A little over, a little over 10 inches. Probably, I wouldn't be afraid to say maybe a four-year-old fish, maybe five. But I kind of like the, the solitude, being by yourself and the constant movement of the creek. It's always fascinated me that they never run out of water. You know, where's it come from? Where's it go? You think eventually something would get empty and something would get full, you know, but it goes on and on and on and on. And unlike a lake, a, a creek is, it, it doesn't end. A lake has boundaries. There's other people out there doing their thing and God bless them. But when I'm on a creek, it's me. And there's just something about it. You know, I, it's tough to explain. I just saw one rise up there. Let's see if I can get that one. There we go. It's a nice fish too. That might be grandpa's. There we go. Pretty close. About ten and a half inches. Wow, uh, you. Yeah. We must have caught what 30, 35 fish. I don't think I'd be lying, would I? Because I know I I've probably caught ten right down here with the dry fly. If not ten, pretty doggone close. So yeah, that's what it's all about. But this uh, 60 years, I never get tired of it here. <laughs> Hey, he got away. The big ones always get away. Yeah. <laughs> 200 pounder. <laughs> World record. <laughs>